Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to create an animated pawn within the Auto Battles engine. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get yourself an animation pack, uh, preferably with a character model. I've chosen to go with the Warrior Pack Bundle 3. Uh, you can find that in the Unity Store. I'll also have a link uh, in the description to the creator's website, so you can check it out there. His stuff is great. Um, it's perfect for our purposes. He's got a nice minimalist character model. Uh, the animations are smooth, so everything's good there. Uh, once you've downloaded that and imported it into your Unity um, editor, you'll go ahead and select whichever model you want to use. Today I'm going to be making a crossbow warrior pawn. So we'll go in there, we'll go into characters, you drag it into your scene. So once you have it here, it should show up like that. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is create an animation controller, uh, a custom one for this particular pawn. Um, and what we'll be doing is actually creating an animation override controller. Uh, those are great so that you don't have to keep reinventing the wheel uh, each time you create a new pawn. So we, you can see here we have the base pawn controller, uh, and what we'll want to do is go into here, create, and we'll create an animator override controller. Okay, uh, we can name that something like crossbow, I name them AOC, short for animator override controller, and up here you can see it wants whichever animator this the, the override is going to be deriving from. So we'll drag in the base pawn controller in there. And you can see these three uh, things pop up here. These are inside of the base pawn controller. And so whenever you call one of these, instead of running whatever animation is in the base pawn controller, it's going to run the override that you provide it right here. Okay, uh, we'll come up to this later, uh, but at least we've made it for now and we have it stored uh, for later use. Okay. The next thing you're going to want to do is get your animations set up within your newly created uh, animation override controller. So in order to do that, uh, we'll go back down to the Warrior Pack Bundle 3. Whichever character you've chosen, you'll want to go into that specific folder, go into animations, and you should see three animations in there. Uh, you're going to want to open all of them up, click on the actual animation itself, and I do Control D to duplicate it. Uh, the reason I'm duplicating these is because they do come with animation events uh, baked inside of them and these are read-only files so you would not be able to get rid of those animation events uh, if you just use the standard animation here. Uh, by duplicating it you can then go inside it, by double clicking on the animation you'll see this right here this animation event we want to get rid of that. Uh, we, we don't have any purpose for this this could be used uh, if you wanted to add like sounds in later. Uh, so if you wanted to play a sound every time you know, your pawn attacks, you could do that here. But for right now, we don't need it. And if you forget this step, uh, every time your guy attacks, you're going to throw an error because it, the Unity is going to be looking for a function on the pawn that's called hit, and you're not going to have that. So we'll go ahead and delete that. Uh, there shouldn't be any in the idle. But we'll go ahead and check out Run. There's two in there, so we'll delete those. I'm just clicking on them and hitting Delete on my keyboard. Uh, so once you've done that, you can rename these so it's easier to find in the editor. So you can just name them, you know, Crossbow Attack One. Go down to Idle. Same thing. Crossbow Idle. And lastly, we'll do the same thing for run. Okay, so now that we have that, we'll go back up into our animator controllers. We'll click on our crossbow animation override controller. So these three show up right here. Come back down to our animations, and we'll just drag and drop those in. Once our animations are in here, you can go ahead and click back on your uh, pawn within the scene. You can see here it currently doesn't have a controller, so we will go back to our folder, we'll select the correct uh, override controller, and we'll drag and drop that in. You're also going to want to disable uh, root motion, so you do not want to apply root motion, so click that off. Next, you're going to want to create a prefab. 
uh, so that way we can distinguish our pawn from the character model that is in the free bundle. Uh, so we'll go into our pawn folder. We'll create a folder for this particular pawn. So I'll just call it crossbow. Go ahead and go into the folder and we will just drag and drop our prefab into that folder. When you get prompted, you want to make an original prefab. And you'll see that little white indicator there disappear. So now we have uh, our very own separate prefab. Um, I like to label them by which star ranking they are. So in this case, this is going to be our one star pawn. And this one is animated. So I like to distinguish that as well. So I'm going to delete this one just to avoid any confusion. And I'm going to redrag the new prefab into the scene. So now it's got the correct name. Next, we are going to create our pawn stats scriptable object. Uh, so we'll go into the pawn stats folder. We're going to create a new folder. We'll just call that crossbow. Go inside the folder. Uh, a scriptable object is a custom made object. So we'll go right click, create, custom, and pawn stats. So this is essentially just a data container. All right, this is going to be our one star uh, pawn stats for this particular pawn. So we'll just name it accordingly, crossbow one star, and this is going to go on the animated pawn. So we'll designate that there. And then you're just going to fill in your general info for this particular pawn. So name, we'll just call it crossbow. Uh, the icon, I've already made an icon for this. So it's right here. Uh, the pawn itself, this is going to be the actual game object. Okay, so you'll go into the pawns folder, into the crossbow folder that we made, and then the, the one star crossbow pawn, you're going to drag and drop that in there. Uh, this is going to be a one star pawn, so it could be a one, two, or a three. This one is a one star. The pawn quality, as of right now, this really doesn't do much within the engine itself. Uh, it really just updates the cost of the unit and then also just displays the the name a little differently in the shop so we can just call this an uncommon pawn for now uh, and then the upgraded pawn we're gonna leave this blank for now but this is where you're gonna put your two star crossbow so that when you have three of the same unit on your bench this is what it's gonna upgrade into okay and if it's left blank essentially when you put three of the same unit on the bench it's not gonna do anything Okay, so leaving a blank isn't that big of a deal, but we do want to touch on that a little bit later. Uh, origins and classes, again, this is this really does nothing. This is just for show for right now, but we'll still put it in there. So size 1, this will give you the prompt here. Uh, this can just be an elf and the class. Take a look at that. Uh, we'll see what makes sense. Uh, nothing really here makes sense, so we'll just call it a druid for now. Okay. Okay. Uh, in this sense, obviously the crossbower is going to be a ranged unit, so you're going to want to add a projectile here. If you were creating a melee unit, uh, by leaving this blank, uh, that's what you want to do. You want to leave this blank. If it's a melee unit, it's not going to affect anything. Uh, but by if we want a ranged unit, you want to put the projectile in here. Uh, and I believe I just called it projectile. Yep, there it is. It's this red sphere here. So we'll make sure we'll put that in. Uh, and then you're just going to fill this in to your heart's content, whatever you feel like this unit's stats should be. Uh, let's say we want it to do you know, 80 damage as a minimum, maybe 120 max damage. The base attack time is going to be uh, how long a complete attack takes. So we could just set it at maybe 1.7 seconds. The attack point is once the attack is launched, uh, how long after does the projectile spawn? Okay, and in this case, let's just say 0.3. Uh, the attack range is going to be how many squares away from this particular pawn uh, can it attack another pawn. So let's say well, a pretty good attack range. We'll do six. Uh, mana per attack. This does nothing as of right now. It does increase the mana on the, the status bar, uh, but mana as of right now does not have a purpose. But we'll still fill that in. So we'll say every attack they'll get 10 mana. And the movement speed, we could do, let's just say, 5 movement speed. Health, let's give it 800 health. We'll give it 100 mana, and we'll give it 3 armor. Okay. 
So once you have all of your stats filled out how you'd like, we're going to go back to the pawns folder, specifically the crossbow. We'll click on our crossbow one star prefab. We're going to want to add all of the components that are going to make this game object an actual pawn within our game. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to just click add component and type in pawn. Once you attach the pawn component, it's going to f automatically fill in the rest of the required components to make this unit a pawn, which is super nice. Um, the one thing you're going to want to do once all of the scripts are in position, you're going to go want to go down to the pawn script. Okay, um, you're never going to want to change these here. These are just they're really just only read only. These are going to be generated once the game runs, and it's going to pull these stats from that pawn stat scriptable object that you created. But we need to provide it one before it can do that. So we'll go into here. We will find our crossbow, which is the first one. And we'll double click on that, and it fills it in there. Next, you're going to want to come up to the auto attack script. Um, you're going to want to enable using animations. You can leave it the attack uh, trigger string as attack one. If you're using the base pawn controller that I provided, that is going to be the name that uh, you'll find here from the any state. Uh, it's going to require the attack one trigger from the parameters. So you can leave that uh, there. So the last thing I believe we have to do is add our new pawn into our database. Uh, what this is going to do is allow it to actually show up in the shop so that you can purchase it and actually use it. So we will change the database size from 5 to 6. Uh, we'll go in what this is asking for. This isn't asking for the actual prefab. Instead it's asking for the, the pawn stat scriptable object which contains all your data. Okay. So we'll go back to our database script uh, right here. We added that element. We'll drag and drop it in. And we should be good. I'll go ahead and there's no overrides on this, so we're good there. I will delete this from the scene. And let's see if it works. Oh, we got lucky. We got three of them there. Okay, it looks like it's working. I can see her moving down there her in. It looks like the crossbow isn't quite in her hands. Go ahead and start the round. Oh, and she's kicking. All right, there you have it. Uh, let's go ahead and get the crossbow in her hands, even though she is kicking, uh, which is pretty funny. Uh, we're also going to make her look a little bit bigger so that we can see her. So we will go into the crossbow. We'll open up the prefab. Uh, first things first, let's make her a little bit bigger. So let's do 1.5 on the scale and then it looks like her crossbow is not in the correct hand yeah it's just out here so we'll go and we'll find her right hand let's first drag and drop the crossbow we'll bring it down and this is her right hand so we'll drag and drop it in there so now when the animation plays the crossbow should follow along with the model itself so we'll get back. Let's play again. Crossbow. Yeah, so now you can see she's actually holding it, <laughs> even though the animation he provided is a kick instead of actually shooting the crossbow, which is I had no idea up until just now. It's pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and start it, and you can see the crossbow now follows, and when she kicks, she throws out the projectile. And I think we made her stats a little overpowered because she is having no trouble here. Yep, and we won. So I think the last thing to do um, is to show you, and it's basically to be the same steps, but so you go back into your scriptable game object for the crossbow, and like I said, when you leave the upgraded pawn blank, it's not going to upgrade into anything when you have three of them. Okay, and so in order to avoid that, you're essentially going to follow the exact same steps uh, in creating a a new pawn. Uh, so you're going to want to do, you can see here, like for Linda, I have three separate pawns, you know, one star, two star, three star. And then likewise, they have three separate uh, pawn stats for that. So one star, two star, three star. And you're basically just going to follow the exact same steps that I just went through, create two new pawns, 
you know, a two star and a three star. And once you've done that, you'll go into the crossbow, you know, one star pawn stats. And where it says upgraded pawn, you're going to drop that pawn stat in here. So for instance, and just to show you quickly, if for whatever reason we wanted the crossbow to upgrade into a king two, uh, you know what, I'll actually do a mace two because that one has animations on it. So you could drag and drop the mace two star in here. So if we can get a little lucky here, uh, we're not lucky there, let's try to restart it. Okay, so we got one crossbow, we'll go ahead and start that round. There we go, two two crossbows. Oh, we don't have enough money though. Now let's do it again. Enemy won the round. And there we go. So when I click on this, oh, here I'll drag this guy over here. Click on this, and once I drag it onto this, it's going to upgrade into a mace too. Which obviously, that's not the way we want it to work. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea of how that should play out. Uh, there you go. So obviously he's probably going to get his butt kicked because he's he's well outnumbered here. Uh, but yeah, that's everything into creating your own animated pawns for the Auto Battles engine. Thanks for watching.